I'll share you what we are doing, what we have done, what are the problem in the sector, and what needs to be done to actually to uh, ask you to lead, to manage, operate, and build the systems. So I have yeah few slides. Yeah, future to rural electrification in Nepal. Uh, as you know, I mean, many of us know that we almost 69, 70% of the population have got access to electricity, and from our side, from off-grid, around 14%, you know, households have got connection. Still, large number of populations do not have, you know, grid quality um, electricity. This grid quality electricity actually reminds me, you know, e even in urban area, we do not get reliable supply. You know, Kathmandu, the capital city, is uh, being faced by the load setting of around, you know, 14, 14, 15 hours time during winters. So if we do not have, you know, grid quality electricity, uh, we also need to think of sustainability of the project that we build in rural area. But we claim that we are very rich in natural resources, water resources, solar resources, because of our location, because of our terrain. Uh, this slide is to show you, maybe Stewart will need this slide again in future, uh, just to show you the uh, central grid. You can see the, the southern part is almost covered by the grid, even though we do not get the reliable supply, as I mentioned already. And also the central, you know, central, central zone is also somehow you know, connected to the uh, national grid. But the uh, eastern part and the western part and the Himalayan mid-hill regions are completely out of central grid. Uh, what about uh, the, um, I just want to bring you, uh, try to match the rural as well as urban context. In rural, the settlements are scattered, you know, uh, the, their demand is also very low, and extending greed on those you know, very remote areas is also very difficult in terms of the economics also. You, know, you invest a lot, but you get very little you know, um, uh, profit from that. And in urban area, this is, you know, this is our reality. Uh, actually, uh, the power cut schedule, you know, weekly power cut schedule is there, and uh, children are using kerosene lamp just to you know, um, uh, do their homework. So we have higher low density in urban area, but people are not actually, uh, they, are, they don't get reliable supply. Uh, what are the prospects? As I was mentioning, you know, we are very much rich in water resources. Uh, my, you know, Birwarji will be uh, talking about the hydro aspects a little later, but this is the prospect for solar energy. As you can see, the mid hill and high hills, uh, we get, you know, around five unit uh, per meter square per day. This is the uh, radiation data from the average annual uh, radiation data. Uh, what we have done, actually Dr. Pokhrel has highlighted already this one, where this whole sector has been institu institutionalized since 1996 with the establishment of AEPC under Ministry of, Energy, uh, Ministry of Environment, Science and Technology. And we also had REDP, Rural Energy Development Program, uh, in 1996. Then uh, we had uh, energy sector assistance program uh, supported by different owners, and also we had REDP, you know, the first phase, the second phase, 1999 to 2003. The whole idea was to, you know, prepare uh, the policy, and uh, we call, you know, our modality is public-private partners partnership. Even though we, the private sectors are treated as a contractor, not as an equity investor, but uh, this modality has been uh, quite successful. We had ESAP second. Uh, there also in rural, you know, electrification, we have, uh, actually we used to support solar home system and micro hydro. Uh, we also had the program called REP, Renewable Energy Project, supported by European Uni Union. Basically, the whole idea is to set up a micro utility in rural area, community energy service provider. Uh, again, the whole focus was micro hydro, solar, and institutional solar. Uh, since 2013, we had, uh, Dr. Bokrel had already mentioned, uh, the National Rural and Renewable Energy Program based on a programmatic approach, single program modality. And now we have you know, discussing, talking about this ABC new kind of model that we are here to discuss. Uh, the model, this guy, basically the rural area, this, this slide is to show you the existing, uh, existing our delivery model. This guy in rural area, you know, wants to have a solar panel 
And we have basically three players. One, the qualified company. We qualify company based on their human resource, physical resource, financial resource, and their business plan. And also we are at center, you know, uh, over providing monitoring and, uh, you know, coordinate, coordinating uh, activities at the central level. So this guy will actually contact the qualified company and the qualified company will install the system. The qualified company, the private sector, they can claim subsidy from us. So subsidy is actually reimbursed to the private sector. Uh, this is the modality and we have our monitoring unit, uh, Alternative Energy Promotion Center at the AUPC and district uh, energy offices at district as well as regional service center. Basically these are our intermediary, intermediary organizations. And we also mobilize independent consultant to do a kind of monitoring and quality assurance. Uh, the service network at the moment we have, uh, you know, mm, solar PV as well as solar thermal. We qualify uh, solar institutional solar um, company for institutional bigger systems. And we also have the, the specialized company for pumping. And as I was mentioning, a district energy unit, the regional service center, and whole district is, uh, you know, divided. Basically, in our purpose, we have divided, you know, um, in, in um, I think, in eight cluster. So why do we need this approach, basically microgrid approach? As I was mentioning, we need a grid quality electricity to sustain the project. That's why uh, we think, you know, providing uh, more energy services will help people, uh, will enhance the livelihood of the people in the remote area. So this is, a, a, we think, a su suitable option for, uh, for providing, you know, energy services. We also had, uh, you know, not very good experiences. Uh, you know, state utility, the Nepal Electricity Authority had supported, you know, three projects, three mini-grid projects, but not operational at the moment because of there are so many technical uh, and managerial problems. So what are the problems in, in, in implementing, you know, mini-grid mini or micro-grid projects? Uh, this is basically, again, um, based on the solar experience. One is the finance, you know, you need to invest a little bit high. Uh, investment is needed, but the tariff you know, collection is a problem. And also, we've not been able to link this with the productive windows, that part. Uh, second one is technical issue. Technical issue, you know, uh, the rural area, people in rural area, they lack capacity in, you know, managing, maintaining, and operating the systems. Uh, majority of the components, you know, you need to import from abroad. This is, uh, you know, not only for solar, but also for uh, hydro also, if you talk uh, if you want to build a bigger hydro, you need to import. Uh, maintenance operation is, is a problem. Uh, knowledge, as I mentioned, you know, knowledge not only in the private sector, but also in the civil society, users level, and the government level. Uh, users' expectation is very high, but their affordability is a question. So that part is also uh, an issue. Uh, and uh, the, in policy front, we lack, you know, policy, uh, you know, we have, we, the whole sector is guided by rural energy policy, but, um, you know, the area is not defined, you know, where to extend the grid, where, uh, where, is, uh, where the area is for an off-grid, that part is completely, um, is not there. And private sectors are, as I mentioned, are treated as a, as a contractor only. They are paid for their services, not, not uh, they are not encouraged to invest in the, uh, in the renewable energy sector. So what needs to be done then? So this ABC anchor business and customer model basically to address those you know, issues as, uh, as ident identified before. Um, you know, we need to identify uh, who are the anchor, anchor customer. Basically, they, they need you know, electricity for 24 hours, maybe telecom tower or hospital. You know, uh, uh, and we also need to uh, you know, identify, assess the potential business business people, they need uh, power during daytime. Uh, as, as uh, you know, I was mentioning, you know, where to go grid, go for grid, uh, and where to go for off-grid. That part also we need to identify. Uh, that, that uh, you know, Mr. Stewart definitely will be talking a little later. And capacity enhancement, you know, at all level of governance. The community, district, uh, and the central. Not only in the, uh, in the private, uh, not only in the government sector, but also in the private sector, uh, civil society. Uh, so all sector has to be uh, capacitated. So uh, to address this uh, issue of 
bringing private sector in a lead role, we need to support them. How do we support? Maybe this, this initiative uh, will you know, address this issue. Uh, private sector needs support for the project identification, project development, and project implementations. Because this is a new concept, new model, so they need support. Uh, one way to support incentivize them, another way to link them with the finance. So, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is a map that uh, we prepared with the help of uh, Mr. Bola Thakal. Basically, the whole idea, is, whole idea is to make a national, you know, national map, worldwide electrification map. For example, this is a map of Bake, where you can see a fully electrified area, partially electrified area, and not electrified area, worldwide. So if we collect all those informations from uh, you know, all 75 districts, so we'll know where to go. Where, where is the business? That part we'll, we'll know. This is just, a, just an example from uh, our work. And in case of microhydro, we have, you know, uh, with the support of ESAP and REDP, we have installed around you know, 18 megawatt uh, projects already. And you can see you know, the microhydro projects are scattered all over Nepal, you know, mid-hill and high-hill. So uh, these project sites, you know, if we, if we get information of, you know, energy access, electricity access, and demographic, demographic information, we'll be able to, you know, identify in which particular area, maybe private sector will come and then, uh, you know, uh, start uh, leasing the, taking the projects. So that part also we need to think. So this much from my side. Uh, so we'll be, I'll, be, I'll be around, so uh, we'll discuss later. Thank you very much.